So I believe we are all underway here uh, with Liz Jensen and Melissa Rushton getting started. Melissa uh, puts on a nice break here, but gets kind of treetopped on this two. Get on the one, pulls off a great shot here. Pockets the one, but gets a little sticky on the two ball. So uh, one interesting thing about Melissa is the pace that she plays at is just so methodical. You know, she really takes her time. She never looks rushed. She never looks uh, like apprehensive. Gotcha. She really does a good job with fundamentals and just staying with it. And you, you know, when you when you watch her play, you can't tell whether she's winning or losing. She looks exactly the same. Okay, I see kind of like a monotone type of uh, emotions. Yeah. Right. But a lot of skills. She's she's been playing for a lot of years. Nice. Oh, yeah, so it's Liz Jensen, not Liz Cole. Okay, cool. cool. Liz Jensen plays out of Legends in Beaverton, Oregon. Oh, nice. So she's made the trek down from Beaverton. Shout out to her husband, Michael Jensen. Yeah, Team, uh, team Oregon uh, player, right? From the Northwest Cup this past year. Right. I think actually only a few months ago, really. But yeah. And uh, she plays with a Jerry Olivier. I'm not. I'm not familiar with. Uh, it must be mm. a custom cue maker, maybe locally. Yeah, it sounds about right. There's always like that handful of like custom cue makers that everybody knows, and then there's like, you know, if you hear of one that you maybe don't know about, it tends to be the case where it's a custom maker. But a lot of cool stuff from custom cues. I like a lot of yeah, a lot of woodworking and stuff, right? Yeah, a lot of good. There's a lot of good custom cue makers in the Northwest. My brother-in-law being one of them, Sheldon LeBeau, uh, does LeBeau custom cues. Fantastic work. Kind of tricky this ball. Yeah, I think that I don't she. Think she could have cut it, right? No, I think that was the right move. I don't think she wants <clears throat> to set up this three nine though. Any possibility for that? But she has given Melissa. She has given Melissa the opportunity for the three nine, and on top of that, the cue ball rolls to up to the other end of the table, mm -hmm. and comes back. Now, you, you actually could also play this as a carom when you run into the nine with the cue ball. And I wonder if that oh. gives better separation from the three cue ball if you miss. That's a good point, it actually. It seems pretty thin, though. I don't know. It's hard to tell. If, if, if you can kind of bank the three up table, it might, might yeah, she be might, a little she, bit easier think, to get separation that way. Yeah, I think Melissa was originally she was queuing and looking at what you were doing, what you were talking about. Yeah, now then, it's a combo, yeah, right? She changed it to the combo. I think she, what a there. shot. Beautiful. Sh uh -oh. Watch out, cue ball. Okay. Oh, wow. That was a great combo on the nine to get started. Melissa. Shot. Melissa Rushton just brings it. Over two days, it looks like we're going to be running uh, this tournament, I think. I'm not sure exactly at what point they're going to get to tonight, but I imagine it'll be at least the money rounds uh, through tonight. And then tomorrow morning, we'll start back up. And What, t what time uh, does it start tomorrow morning? Not exactly sure. Uh, I think we'll have to get the the feel of what the tournament is at. I think maybe to figure that out. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure. I think uh, who is it that's running? It's not Mike. Somebody else is running. So. Oh, watch out, nine ball. Um, Chris, I think. Chris is the one running this tournament, I believe, and he might be the person to ask for the uh, timings, but. Oh, we said the rules too. That the uh, the nine on the break does not count. Is that correct? So it, it'll uh, be respotted. But, but then you said BCA rules. So which the nine does count on the break in BCA rules. So yeah, so I, I I'm not a hundred percent clear on on whether or not uh, golden breaks are allowed here. Oh, cheeky little safety attempt. I think. Yeah, it was cheeky's a good word for that, that oh, yeah. shot. It was. It's just nice little soft roll. 
unexpected, you might say, right? Kind of like... Yeah, she got a little separation. She knew that the one wasn't really going to go anywhere because it was already mm -hmm. kind of locked to the six. So use that to her advantage. I think she wanted a little more roll out of that cue ball so that Liz couldn't see this opportunity. <clears throat> Watch out, nine ball. Yeah, Liz plays a nice shot here. A lot of distance. Yeah. And I'm not even sure if that one even goes anywhere. So I, I'm i thinking here, I like hitting that one ball right to the center diamond on the bottom rail and using top so that you can leave the cue ball around the, the three and the purple five kind of area. Okay, kind of like crossing the path of the cue ball. Yeah, uh, that's what I like here. Yeah, so that's a good shot. Just missed the three. And and that's exactly what she or, or did. Or play for the three, actually. This is, this is nice. That was exactly what she did. Just, you know, hit that one ball to where yeah. it goes full down to the bottom rail, and you're playing all cue ball there because you know if you hit that three or five, you're going to be in good shape. And she hit it at the perfect speed. Yeah, nicely done. Excellent shot. Uh, so Liz does have a one rail kick here coming behind the seven ball. Uh, but it's got bad news written all over it. You know, so many bad things can happen here. Yeah. This nine, though, might come into play. If she hits it sweet enough, she could... I mean, the, the, the cut angle it takes to push the one to the nine is a little bit flirting with the scratch at the top left corner, but yeah, depending on how she hits this, this nine could come into play. And I think she's coming across the top. Oh, she did. It did come yeah, into play, hit, like you said. Did. Not bad. I like that shot, and I think it just ramp up the speed on it a little bit more, and I think that that could be even better. But yeah. pretty, pretty touchy when you when you get faster, it might might not kick at the same angle anymore. So, what do you like here, Christian? You think you know, is there an opportunity to lock up behind the nine? Now this safe, I'll take a pocketbook out of the Moscone team, and I'll try to run the cue ball off the right edge of the one thicker than you might think because the cue ball is going to naturally want to go two rails and come underneath the seven and maybe even underneath the three if you get the third rail that or you play it uber thin the problem with uber thin is you kind of lay up the one next to the corner if you go the other way i like cutting it like this yeah and then miss this three ball hopefully because you're guaranteed to get that distance oh boy yeah, you're, you're playing really, the seven all day basically she's you get behind the three that's just bonus you're really happy with this one came out Beautiful. The only problem is you, you kind of are selling out the one to that top left corner pocket. So it is kind of a so you have kind to get of a cover. risky safety, right? Yeah, you have to find cover. Yeah. So this is two shots in a row that Melissa is used the, the three and five and seven as coverage. Yeah, she. Okay, good hit. If it gets Not to bad. a rail, oh, the one, the cue ball did get to the rail, didn't it? Uh, yeah, the cue ball hit after the one. Yeah, it. Yep, okay. That's right. Even the eight ball hit as well, so. Great hit on that ball. That was a really well, tough one to get, two rails. And now where she's put the eight is, has made this rack a lot more difficult to run out. Even, even if this one cuts two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, getting on the eight is really important. Seven to eight is going to be tough. Yeah, the seven to the eight. That's like um, Niels Fine's yo-yo drill. Have you, ever done, <laughs> yeah. have you ever done that or watched that? Oh yeah, I've seen I've seen the, a ton of his drills. The, yeah. the Terminator, Terminator. That's that's uh -huh. one of his popular ones. I like. I like to practice that yo-yo drill at home. Just putting the balls the back and forth. Yeah, yeah, the back and forth between one ball and one rail to get to the shape on the other ball and the other rail, and you have to just keep going back and forth. We got Cheryl Johnson, youth in the chat, shouting out Liz, saying great to see you playing, Elizabeth. I think she Elizabeth has a tough one here. Not really any one railers that are that safe, I feel like. If she goes one rail this way, she kind of has to put a little bit of spin on the ball. I don't even know if she can. I get it. She's going to maybe glance off of it barely. Yeah. And just a reminder. Well, the other way is um, hard. Sorry to interrupt. Just, uh, good, just, good. just a reminder for those in the chat, if you guys are enjoying this stream, please like and share the stream. Let's get these players an audience. 
And this is a good opportunity for them to really show everybody what they can do. Uh, let's get that audience built up. I know a lot of people are going to be interested in watching this, so please share the stream. That's the way it gets out there. So if you guys hit that share button. Yeah, we want to support women's pool in the Northwest. Doing a lot of good things. Shout out to the NWPA for hosting this here. We're excited to have everyone here. Yeah, shout out to Ox Billiards for putting this together. That's uh, a fantastic event and a venue. Fantastic venue. So we are very fortunate to have a club like this in Seattle. Yeah, and this is what it's all about. It's for the players, right? Got a lot of shout out for Liz in the chat. Nice. Robin Garrison. Stephanie Wilcox. So Melissa is going to flirt with hitting that four ball, but she gems perfectly in between Perfect. the five and four. You know, that was a touchy shot because, yeah. you know, if she comes into that four, she probably gets in trouble. But now she's looking really good here. I think if she has a slight angle, but if she's straight on this ball, it's going to be tough because that pink four ball is next. Yeah, she's not quite she's easy on this. She has to punch it a bit or to roll forward. Yeah, it's a nice it. stun shot. Perfect. A lot of support in the chat from Liz, Alexander Ortiz, Stephanie again. Go Liz, go Liz. Oh, yeah. Melissa Russian might have something to say about that because she's playing good right now. Like we said, those seven to eight, all these balls almost don't really matter too much. Figure out what you can do seven to eight. Right. This is this. Is, I think this is the most important shot actually for the setup. Because getting on the set on the six with some angle. If you get straight on the six, there's no way you're getting seven to eight. So, pretty important here. Don't don't take this for granted. She did not oh, take that for granted. Ball. She Good. knew she knew how important that shape was on the six. Yeah. I mean, she she knew it. She had to yeah, get that really perfect shape, and I think she got it. I like going top here, top inside, and swing it around. Mm -hmm. Because if you land on the side rail on the left side, you're good. Um, yeah, you might get close to the seven if you don't put enough side rails. So she draws. Line it up and back. Yeah, that's good too. She's, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, she's got an angle. Another draw shot if that eight is far enough past the side. Let's take a look at the side camera and just see where that eight lies. Do you have enough to... Yeah, to avoid the scratch? Yeah, I think you do, but you are going to hit the point, which is going to kind of kill the cue ball action on that eight ball. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see how she wants to play this. She could like, play with follow. It just depends on if the eight is frozen to the rail or not. That does look like what she's doing. Yeah, that's not bad. Oh, she got really good on this. Oh, you got to like that. Ball yeah, not I frozen. So. Uh oh. Oh, that's a tricky shot. Yeah, it really when was. When the ball is that close to the pocket, it it's kind of deceptive. But you're actually, you're. I feel like your margin of error is actually a little bit lower because any amount that you hit into the rail at the beginning of the shot, this is going to get magnified towards the end. You know. Right. But if if you do that from farther away and hit into the rail, it can tend to. Like, since the, since the cue ball hasn't really started to, or the object ball hasn't really started spinning yet, it gets more grabby, you know? Like, when it's when it's already ro racing down the rail, if you hit the second or third diamond, it's almost like the follow that it has naturally pushes it down the line more. Yeah. But if you're right at the beginning of the of the run and your cue ball is not even, or your object ball is not even spinning yet, then it can kind of, like, magnify and get off the rail a lot more than, than expected. So I guess where the stroke comes into play. Yeah, yeah, Liz tried to draw into shape for that nine and ended up hitting it full on, and that's going to cause a little bit of an issue here. 
this bank might be on. Reverse bank it to the bottom right corner. Well, she's getting the bridge. It's close. So. She could thin it also on this play safe. She lo it looks like she's aiming for it to bank the other way. To or to or the she left might, corner? I don't know. Let's see. Pretty thin. Yeah, she's playing, playing safe. safe. You gotta be careful here with the cue ball, because if the cue ball runs too far on you, you're gonna sell out that shot in the corner for Melissa. Oh, I see what she's doing. There we go. Yeah, thin. Nice, thin. Table. Yeah, excellent shot. That's experience yeah. right there, you know. that That's just yeah. an experienced nine ball player. Yeah, definitely. Knowing how to get an extra turn. Now this one you're gonna aim to overbank it and go high right spin and swing the cue ball around in case you miss. Oh, she's not missing she's that. Going. Is it? Oh, oh I thought it was going rattled. in. Just Ooh, rattled, fortunate. but she got fortunate, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a shot that Allison Fisher uh, talked about when she came to her clinic here. Uh, she was saying that's the shot that you want to, if you overbank it, your, your natural path of the cue ball and the nine ball is going to set up the exact same shot for your opponent if you shoot the cue ball with running English. But eight out of ten times, if you overbank it and hit it at that pace, you're going to shorten and stiff the bank and make it dead in the pocket. Oh. So okay. I like shooting that shot at a higher speed with running English on the cue ball and aiming to, you know, be a little bit wide. And it's kind of weird, but if you try it at home, it's, it's an interesting shot. And then the path of the nine goes two, three rails around, and the cue ball goes three rails around. And it ends up setting up almost the exact same shot. It's kind of weird. So another safety attempt. I don't think she's going to like this one as much. She's going to give up a shot. Yep, yeah, opportunity here for Melissa. Don't stun it if you're going to the left corner pocket. Side pocket looms large. You can draw it if you have enough stroke, but it's kind of touchy. I like this following it. She is drawing. Yeah, perfect. Beautiful. Right in the center of the pocket. Great shot by Melissa Rushton. Yeah, nicely done. Break from Melissa. Makes a ball, it looks like the seven is down and has a thin cut on this one ball. I like pulling the magic rack down because this could get a little iffy if the cue ball comes up there. Yeah, I'm a big fan of getting that rack off the table right away if you can. And I've, I've kind of fallen in love with these turtle racks. They seem, they seem to be working pretty well. Uh, yeah, they're pretty easy to get off the table. They usually don't have a ball stuck to them too often. I think she's using yeah. outside here to swing two rails. Yeah, looks exactly right. Gonna run into the two maybe does magic rack come into play it oh, wow. doesn't but it very well could have wow these balls are tight yeah this is a referee call in my opinion i think i'm calling the ref who's our ref today here i believe it's chris chris what's his last name i think he's tournament director chris rogers yeah chris rogers i believe he's uh Players Club Limited, league operator, from what I understand. Okay. Yeah, those balls are tight. I was formerly of that league many years ago. It's been a long time since I've been oh, yeah? in the Players Club Limited League. I used to live in Seattle 10 years ago. Moved out to Kitsap County. Oh, nice. Yeah, I think, I think our league here at Ox, our BCA league on Sundays, uh, goes through Players Club Limited, so shout out to them. A lot of good stuff. I think they have leagues going all the way up even to Marysville from what I've heard. This nine, I think, is in the way of the cut. So Liz Jensen, a little about her while she's aiming here. She's uh, at the World Championship BCA in Rio. She's a gold scotch doubles champion in 2018. 
She's also a VNE, VNEA international champion in Scotch doubles in 2003. So she's been playing for a lot of years. Nice. And yeah. she has three Utah Open State first place championships. Wow. So very decorated player in Liz Jensen here. Yeah, we got some pool royalty in the house. Nice. Yeah. Good stuff. I mean, she almost didn't have enough room on the paper to put it all in here. <laughs> Her note card ran out of space? Yeah. yeah. Nice. That's a heck of a resume. Yeah, not a bad problem to have, right? Right? Oh, tough miss. My pool resume is fairly short <laughs> in comparison. <laughs> well, that's that's why I'm here. I, I learn a lot from watching good players. Yeah, of course. That's all you can do. Just learn, learn as much as you can. Yeah, I love I love the game, and I love you know hearing and, and seeing different uh, people's uh, direction and skill and views on the game. Yeah, perspectives. Is a perspectives. Big thing, right? That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. I'm a fan, a big fan of the game, and I will always be a student of the game. We never, all should be. Never stop learning something new in this game. Okay. Can I juice that one a little bit? Yeah, a lot of roll out of that cue ball, so. Yeah. But Those the, rubbers. The, the direction of this angle for the three in the corner does take her back to that pink four, you know, that side of the table that the pink four is on to where she could either play a shot on the four ball or play a safety on the four ball. So yeah, I think you just put everything into making this shot. Don't try to do too much here and try to lay that cue ball as far over to the right side as you can here. Yeah, especially with the hampered bridging. It's a little bit funny. Yeah. Long bridge, smooth stroke, just cut just, it a little bit thick. Yeah, just undercut, uh, undercut it a little bit. I think her thick. speed was perfect, though, right? I do, too. I think if she hits that at the right angle, I think that cue ball goes over really nicely to the, to the rail. Yeah. Melissa putting some right juice on it. Oh, she's going to get it close to this nine. This good? Uh, I'm pretty I sure. She goes, but yeah, I, 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 I think she's going to draw. Yeah, draw back, and you might even clip the nine on your way back, which is okay. The purple five next. She didn't Big clip the nine, didn't need to. Yeah. Wow. Right? That's hard to do when you're leaning over the table, too, like that. <laughs> yeah, it is. Because she yeah. wasn't directly over the queue. She had to lean over for that shot. And to put that much draw into it, uh, it just go shows the level of skill and experience that Melissa has. Oh, what a oh, beautiful yeah. bump she got on that six ball. Oh, yeah. It couldn't have, it couldn't have bumped it any better. Perfect. Oh, yeah, this is... Now you're premium, yeah. Yep. But, you know, I like how she doesn't just go up and rush. Even though she got so perfect on the six, she doesn't just go up and rush it. She still walks around, takes her time. She does the same routine whether she's got a hard shot or an easy shot, um, it's exactly the same every time. Yep. Just I wonder how much the puns have come out rushed in. How much, how much does she rush in full? I don't think so. Right, it's the opposite, right? Yeah. She's also very quiet, too, you know, when you're talking uh -huh. to Melissa. She doesn't She doesn't talk a lot, but she, she talks with her pool cue. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Her pool cue speaks much louder. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And that's that's the way you want to be. And I believe her mom is also in this tournament competing. Pam Rushton. Nice. Yep. Oh, Pam Rushton. Yeah, she's playing on a uh, table three. It looks like over here. Yep. Yeah, she's playing against uh, Molina Ortiz. I think is the highest rate of Fargo player in the tournament. It's gonna be a tough match. Yeah, she's got her work cut out for her over there. Good thing she's, she's got her fearless jersey on. She needs to be fearless against uh, yeah. 
Is that is that a Savage Billiards jersey, I think? I, I believe sure. it is, yes. Yeah. I want to get one of those. Do you guys sell any uh, Savage Savage apparel here at Ox? Uh, we don't, actually. We have yet to partner with them, so maybe we'll talk about that after. Oh. I don't know. Well, they are I've a sponsor. I've seen Savage the... at like, the Western BCA yeah. events and stuff, but they seem to be pretty popular in the area. Yeah. They are a headline sponsor here. Now, this is a match that I want to watch, too. This is Francis Cho. He's a local Ox player. She plays in our snooker league and a bunch of other leagues. Okay. Up-and-coming player. And um, Cindy Sleva, who's kind of Western BCA Hall of Famer this past year. Uh-huh. So, yeah. Just inducted into the much. Western BCA Hall of Fame. Yeah. That was fun it's to watch. Be a, a pretty good one, I think. It was a surprise, too. They did a Facebook Live, and they didn't tell her what it was about. <clears throat> and so... Uh, when she got oh, announced great. as being inducted into the WBCA Hall of Fame. Yeah. And uh, the surprise on her face was just priceless, you know. <laughs> when she found out, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it was cool. It was uh, what, Clay, I think, was running that induc- induction ceremony or whatever. Yeah, I think so. Clay Bilver, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She had a little live stream going for it. It was awesome. Raw Hannah running the live stream over at... Uh, Chinook wins. Yeah, that was great to have Ra doing the. Um, oh, look at this! Uh, three balls on wow. the break on this one, and gets an opportunity on the one. Uh, so yeah. Liz, big li- break. Yeah, with big break here. The six ball is kind of tied up. She doesn't want to fall behind any further than that to Melissa Rushton. I'll tell you that. Yeah. She this is critical. She needs to come back into this match with a good rack here. Now I think the the six nine is really the yeah, critical. Let's, let's take critical a look. Shot. You can see they're they're pretty tight. I don't think the six passes uh, into the bottom corner, but it might go into the side box. Great really camera tight. work there. You know, you might aim for the hitting the six right now if you yeah, can. Yeah, you actually have the angle. I think you're right. Yeah, if you do, you know, if you can spin, because if you hit it at the right speed, you're probably going to get shape on the deuce. She got shape on the deuce without hitting it, so let's see. This actually could be an angle to run into those balls. Hmm. Right? It looks pretty close if you have a good draw stroke. The problem is you're jacked up, or does it, looks it pretty going straight. away from those? It looks pretty straight. Yeah, it's pretty straight. It might not be. I mean, yeah, if you're cheating the pocket and you're jacking up to draw because it's yeah. close to the rail, a lot of bad things can happen there. I don't know. Yeah, that's the only way, yeah. I don't know, but, you know. That or, or the four. Can you play shape on the four right now to get a good angle to bust open those balls? Well, we're going to find out because I, <laughs> I think that's what she's looking for. Either the break it out now or so she just stops it. And I think she wanted a, a couple inches of draw there, but what happens when you're jacked up on the ball is uh-huh. you lose a lot of that action that you normally are going to get. Yeah, yeah. A lot more of it goes into the slate of the table, right? Yep. Yeah, you're just not able to follow through, right, as much. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Jacked up, a lot of things, a lot of weird things happen. But now, now you get to think about how you're going to play safe on this six ball. Well, she Looking might be like going might around want, the table like trying here. to draw into those balls. I don't see that happening. Not yeah. no, even the bank. I don't think you can draw into those balls. I think she's got to go all the way around three rails around the table. Yeah, three rails around. She can actually break it out if she gets the right line. It's like kind of like an effort. Oh, oh, Miss Q. Yeah, I'm so, we didn't really get an opportunity to know what she was doing there, but I know she had a plan. Yeah. Miss Q definitely is was not part of that plan. But now where the seven lays, it could have been a chance to just, you know, kind of stun that ball up a little bit and then get on top of the six nine and then play hmm. to snooker behind the seven off the two rail. Might have been the, yeah. The thing she was thinking. Yeah, possibly. Know. This is this is tough though. Well, I, I, I think I like here, I think I just use in top and I'm gonna roll that four into the top of the six. And okay. use the use that seven for coverage on the cue ball. But uh, she's going this way, which is fine too. Looks like she has enough. She's yeah, coming behind. Uh, no, yeah, I think I like I like the direction you're talking about. If you can 
like break open the six nine and get the snooker in the same shot it's like the best of both worlds right but it's still it's touchy either way because you're, you're playing only cue ball for the most part right really tough now this six ball does bank into the left side pocket probably so if she wants to play for that shape she could shoot this up into the left corner or the right corner but, uh, this is hard this is a hard shot very hard. Do not envy her position here. All right, now what about this? What about playing the four, bank it into the bottom left corner, and drawing your cue ball so that you kind of run into the seven a little bit? Okay, so in and if case you come you short, miss, hopefully the six nine covers you. Right, and you the, get a little and insurance the four there. Or settles before the side, maybe. I don't know. Well, if you I, make it, you're in shape for the six. Yeah. Bank into the side. I don't know. I mean, these are ones where you always try to look for that two way, right? Or if yeah, it goes, way, yeah. if it goes, you have a shot, and if it doesn't, you're going to be, you know, kind of safe. So she tried to cut it in there, and she got safe on this one, I think. Yes, yeah, she did. I don't think that that part was maybe intentional, but yeah, she got away with it. It's good. Yeah. Now, pretty tough kick, but they're still kind of playing. They're still playing chicken almost with this 6-9. It's almost like neither of them wants to really make the four unless it's a breakoutable shot. Like a Yeah. Going up and down. Doesn't leave it easy. Yeah, so Liz with a tough shot, but an opportunity nonetheless. And just a reminder for anybody that's just recently joined, you are watching the NWPA, the Northwest Women's Pool Association Tour Stop 5, which is the final stop of the season with the awards banquet and happening tomorrow as well. And uh, you're listening to Patrick Nix and Christian Youngers uh, on the commentary. bank it run oh, into those balls beautiful oh, wow good bank yeah she just drilled that thing so now there's a shot that i was talking about earlier a little bit where the the nine's a backboard for you so your six ball is going to stay there as long as you're cutting the six to the to the bottom rail yeah can you play the speed right in the angle right to go maybe two cushions behind the seven or maybe one rail behind the seven uh it's touchy it's pretty touchy right? i don't think you're really going to be holding that cue ball on the nine i think it's going to glance off the nine Oh, no, I'm thinking hit hit the top of the six and hold the six on the. Oh, on the I see what you're saying. Oh, cue ball behind. Now the that, there you go. That's that's a great. That's, that's, that's one. Yep, yeah, that's what she's. Kind of what she was doing, but oh, the six moved a lot. Yeah, she hit it just too hard, right? Yeah, just a little because too hard, right? You were yeah, talking yeah. about that same shot, but leaving the cue ball down at the bottom rail at the first yeah, yeah. at the first diamond, and yes. you're you're holding that six in position and using the seven as a blocker. I, I like that idea. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. It's it's yeah. angles talking on the yeah. camera. It's weird. It's, I don't know how to describe it. But. Right. No, I, I got what you're saying. Yeah. It's gonna probably play this one rail six and separate. Should get the nine in the way. It's not bad. Yeah, close enough. This but is the bank shot, though. This is the bank shot I like. You like banking it in the side off the nine? Yeah. No, bank it underneath you. Bank the six past the nine underneath. Well, I'll, I it mean, it just lays that way. I don't know what it is about this type of bank, but I, I just you like I think those it's a personal huh? thing. I just like it, you know. I I think banking in the side is a bigger pocket because anywhere yeah. you hit that nine ball, and you have a chance to pocket the nine as well on kind of a fluke. Yeah, she's but looking at that shot for sure. I think that's what she's going to take on. If you hit that nine, any part of the center to the side of it, it uh -huh. that six ball automatically goes in the side pocket. Yeah, it's like a gate, right? Yeah, you could even come off the rail off the nine, too, and still pocket that six ball. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a lot more margin for error. I like it. Either way, we're banking the six. Yes. Well, yeah. You're going for it. Now, just note, the rails do play a little short. They got that different type of rail profile. So, and I haven't played on the Rossins. Do you play similar to a diamond? 
table? Um, uh, in some ways, yes. In some ways, no. I think the biggest thing is the, she the did rail. Think, See how it came up really short? It came up quite a bit short. and It's almost like, uh, oh. Well, Got away with it? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Melissa's going to have to work to get out of this one. <clears throat> so do you think that Rossins play... Um, like a little, the, a little shorter uh, on the on the bank I shots. I think they play shorter in different ways that mm. that diamonds play shorter. You know what I'm saying? Like there's certain shots that a diamond just shortens up a ton. You know? Okay. Especially, I mean, because it's what diamond blue tables. Diamond blues are a certain type of uh, profile for the rail cushion, like the rubber underneath the rail. Um, and I think if you've ever played on diamond uh, red labels. These are the same exact cushion profile as the Rassons we have here. Okay. So it's like you're playing on a diamond red more than a diamond blue, if that makes okay. any sense. And so, then the angles at which they play short on, they like play varying amounts of shortness differently. It's kind of weird. It's hard to describe. Yeah. Um, and then along with that, the pocket cut is a, is a very is like a significant difference. I think the the way the the cut is on a diamond, it tends to be more more severe of an angle in yeah. as as the pocket uh, sh uh you know gets tighter to the throat or towards the hole the the opening shortens up faster on a diamond typically yeah so here melissa um, is, or is here uh, liz is playing that shot that we were talking about before she had a second opportunity at at that bank right that, yeah at that, that, that bank, bank and she was definitely going side pocket with that ball side pocket yeah. and she banked that one a little bit wide now this for sure you go for side pocket too. It's a big, it's a big ball to hit the nine. Or you can thin. The seven ball is a good blocker. She played that that like, you know, right side run the cue ball down the table type shot earlier. Yeah. She might play the same type of shot again and just use a seven this time as a blocker. I don't know. Yeah. She could I bank this at the side too though. I wonder if she banks it to the side if she can hold that cue ball to that bottom rail. Yeah. Because if she can do that, then it's a pretty good shot. It's a pretty good two-way. Okay, she oh, just Oh, she hit it. it. She hit it. Yeah, she just thinned it. Not bad. Yeah, she's really good at those safeties like that. She's really making it tough on her opponent, you know. It's... So, so you think... Uh, the diamond pockets, the way they're cut, maybe play a little tighter than a Rossin. Yeah, it's hard to describe. They're almost like they're more angled in. Mm -hmm. they're, they're tighter at the opening of the pocket as it as it. Or sorry, not the opening of the pocket is is the same four and a quarter. As it gets closer to the hole, it shortens a little bit. I think it does two things. I think one at speed they play a little more generous because if you get it in the throat, it'll go down. But they tend to rattle more. There's a small. Oh, pocket. there it oh, goes. Oh, she went for it. There's yeah. the nine. Good shot, Liz. And she wow. needed that one to get off of that round number. And so gets on the board. A great shot. Yeah, perfect. Wow. That was, I mean, that was the. She could tell the past two, three shots. She was going for the nine on all those. That nine was juicy. Like you said. Juicy or spicy? Spicy. That was, I mean, that was a juicy nine. That was juicy. Okay. The shot was spicy. The shot was spicy. <laughs> the way the nine was laying was juicy. Yeah. Okay. I, go. I got now we I got just it. just make sure I got your metaphors down right. You know? <laughs> There's a lot of them, so good. Right. Keep we up, gotta, I guess. Yeah, we got to keep up on those. So, yeah. you know, tell us on Ox Billiards, how do, how do people, uh, is it a membership here or is it by the hour? Uh, what's, uh, what's the deal for people that want to, you know, start coming to Ox and playing at Ox? Yeah. Um, so membership at Ox, um, we have basic, what membership gets you at Ox is basically a discount on the hourly rate and after hours access. We have 24 hours after hours access and we've got, I think, two days a week dedicated to members. I think Mondays and Wednesdays are member only days. So if you're a member, okay. it, only members you're competing against to get a table, basically. We okay. have some leagues running on other days, so... It can, it can be difficult to find a table um, depending on the time of the week. Um, but yeah, membership, basically, you get 24-hour access, you get discount on the rates, and then you get added to kind of like our social media groups and everything. And you sort of, you get to find out about events before they happen, uh, okay. before the public gets to find out about them. Basically. You're part of the so, inside group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of like the whole idea is like um, if we can 
you know, build a big enough membership, it becomes a big community of players, you know, playing here, et cetera, and we all yeah. benefit in that same way. So, for example, like the Jeremy Jones exhibition or clinic that we had, I think he had 13 spots for um, for doing lessons, and I think like eight to ten of those spots went to members right off the bat when we first announced. And I think there were only like four or five spots to non-members that, that were taken. So it's kind of a... You know, for certain things like that, you gain benefits of so future events, stuff like that. Right. It's good to be a member and find out find out early. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a pretty sweet gig. I, I think it's a kind of a unique thing, sort of having the 24 hour access. Not a lot of places have that, I think, when it comes to pool specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, we should probably, uh, I, and I know we do want to talk about Oxford because it's a fantastic place, but Melissa has a break and run going here so far. Uh, she had a nice, good, powerful break and really got going here. So, Is th this th cuttable is the question. Right? This, is the cr this is the critical shot because she's going to come into the eight. So oh, it, it went? Was, uh -oh. Yeah. I mean, the, the shot was on, but just it was coming into that eight ball that made that really difficult. So, Yeah. That purple five ball, she's... I think you gotta go left side rail, kick it this hard. Hard enough at pace to where your cue ball can just stun hit it full, stun at it. Oh, she oh look at this too. Look at this, look at this leave. This might be good. Oh, it popped out a little bit. So Liz does have an opportunity at this combo down table. See if we can get a get a good look at those how those balls are laying there. Yeah, the yeah, combo's on. Definitely the combo's on there. Liz really eyeing that out, making sure that she wants to know exactly because it's not about necessarily making the shot as much as it is controlling the cue ball afterwards because you really don't want that cue ball coming all the way back down table. Yeah, you want to hold in the same position, but it's pretty risky because it's almost a do or die if you miss this. Yeah. You're laying up for your opponent. Yeah, and that cue ball is right on the rail. Oh, Great nice shot. shot. Watch outside pocket. Okay. This is Opportunity. Good. Back cut this into the side, you think? Yeah, I like that. With some draw. Back cut this. Yeah, you can back cut this. If you get enough draw to miss the corner, perfect. You come up one rail, maybe two rails. She's looking about going around the world though, following three rails, maybe four rails. Yeah, she's looking at that line. Okay. You follow, miss the corner. Two rails out of that right top corner. Miss the left side pocket and come down to the right half of the table. That might be also a good shot. Yeah, it all just depends on the angle here that she's got to really be able to see. Yeah, that is we'll pretty see. Safe, So she right? is she is drawing, it looks like. She is going low on this ball. Yeah. There's the draw. Yeah. She a lot was, of good action on the keyboard. Yeah, she really she safe, got right? great on where she wanted to be after that shot. Um, just unfortunately didn't make the ball. But that was would have been perfect on the eight. Now Melissa's looks like this pretty straight in. I think. on this eight ball too but there's enough angle to come around yeah I think this is flat but she's got a friendly angle we'll say it's, yeah it's friendly because it, it, the, potting the ball is, is pretty pretty routine here just, yeah there she goes nice speed well Beautiful. that's Rahana would call that valet parking with tip <laughs> with tip <laughs> are you not entertained bang 
All right, Melissa goes 4-1 up. Pockets the wing ball and the seven ball. Does Liz Jensen. And I think she kind of got snookered here on seeing this one ball. So if she can see a little sliver of it, I think she's going to play a safety. And if not, we're going to be looking at a push out here. So looks like we're going to be running into these balls here. Well, she's on the one, which is way down the table. And I'm not sure if she's playing. Yeah, she's playing a push out. Push out? Oh, okay. Up yeah. on the one. Yeah. So this is a push out here, and I think she's getting this back. I'm 100% confident so. that she's getting this back. I don't think Melissa probably even had to get out of her chair to look at it. <laughs> Just sat there and said, yeah, keep going. <laughs> yeah. <she's laughs> I, don't, I don't need to. I don't need to get out of my chair to look at that. You know, it's just an unfortunate break. Yeah. She says, you want to take that rack off? Yeah, let's take that rack off. Have the ref do it. Chris Rogers. And we're going to get a Shout ref the to director. take the rack off the table here. Tournament director and referee. Yeah. I talked to him about these little pocket or ball markers that he has. Uh, and he kind of angles them so that the bottom of it is a smaller surface area than the top of it. That way he can, you know, slide the rack underneath it more easily and stuff. Kind of a nifty little, like a uh, ball marker. Yeah. Made out of wood. Very nice. So I definitely like two rails. You want to come underneath this one. Just because the, the odds of pocketing the one ball are slim. So you want that, you come that second rail underneath the one ball mm -hmm. and it's a good kick and stick, right? It sends the yeah, one down Yeah, it's a good kick table. and stick. It's also a good chance to get easier separation if you rub it, like if you go thin on it instead of thick, right? Yep. In general, like the separation off those balls is easier when you're coming at that angle, I feel like. So uh, you did see her using that parallel shift that uh, Eddie was talking about. Yeah, and see how the ball just split up yeah. so easily. Nothing wrong with that shot. Yeah, well done. So here, how good is your stroke? That's the question. Well, Not too bad. Melissa's stroke is pretty darn good. Yeah. Look, on most days. There. Christine mounts in the chat and says, jacket came off. That means business. That's right. All right. This four ball looms large on this shot. Got to figure out how you want to run into it, I think. Don't think you can avoid it quite. You're flirting with the corner if you could have drawn that much. But she might be trying to miss it. 
Oh, playing the bank? Okay. Or maybe playing it underneath or Oh, this is gonna end up nice. Yeah, it worked out really well. Oh, sorry for the Liz Jensen fans out there. This is a tough one again. Back to back, probably two real kicks, I think, right? Yeah, I mean I don't think that you're jumping because you're you're over that four ball. If the four's not there, I think you probably jump in this. Or if you're left handed, I guess. I think if I'm left-handed, I, I mean I am left-handed. I think I can jump this, but if you're on the if you're bridging on the other side, yeah, the four is really big in a way. I don't know how large uh, Miss Jensen's hands are, but yeah, oh, well, that's that's true. That's yeah, that, that you're right. You want to have that bridge elevated, and to do that, you have to be kind of close to the cue ball with your hand, and yeah, yeah. The four is kind of right in the way if you're a right-handed player, like you said. The masse might be a possibility. No, she's okay. She is getting the bridge to kick. You're thinking Massé on the left side of the yeah, around the left edge, around the, the left edge, yeah. but then you'd be coming off the rail and into the two ball. It's probably yeah. not gonna, it's probably not going to end well for you if you do that. It's still it's a, it's a decent chance to hit it though. You might even come two rails and come underneath the two. Depends. Yeah, well, I think in this situation, I'm just looking for a good hit. And yeah. if I get lucky, I get lucky. And if I don't, you know, uh, you know, at least I'm not giving up ball in hand. So, yeah, pretty much. So this, this angle, one, though, is just kind of hard to judge, you know. You're so close to that, that end rail. I think she wants to go two rails with this. But you got to miss the side pocket if you're going to go two rails. you got to make sure you clear that side pocket. Yeah, it looms pretty large. Right? It does. So oh. she came way short on that. I think it was a little bit of left spin, a little too much left spin. Might have been, yeah. So she does give up the ball in hand. 6-8, though. Not easy. You might even play, you might play 2-3, get straight on 4, and roll 4 into the left corner, and then shoot the 6 up table. That might be a shout, but I think the hard part of this rack is 6-8. and eight. Or you take the combo. I don't know what else. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Well, no, it's always good to have a plan, right? I mean, yeah. it never hurts to be thinking ahead in nine ball or in any pool game for that matter, because you do have to deal with it eventually. And right. um, I kind of like, you know, potentially setting up for a safety on the six down the road. And there's nothing mm, okay. wrong with there's nothing wrong with pocketing two or three balls and having a safety in mind on that fifth shot because you do have the eight or the nine to hide the cue ball behind, you know, mm -hmm. with that with a six. Um, so just kind of keeping that in mind gives you just more options on where you can leave the cue ball that are going to be in a good spot. Yeah, definitely. I like this. Just if you can stun. It looks like she has enough angle to stun. I like rolling forward, probably though, just just because you might get straight on that forward. If you get straight on that forward, you definitely can get straight six and out. But yeah, this is a little tricky. This is a little bit harder to judge from that distance. Oh well, I think this is a safety. She's gonna yeah, draw this cue ball to, right? into the eight. You could maybe force follow and try to make it two way and bank this four into the left side pocket it might yeah and exactly run into the eight ball after yep it might be that I mean, angle might be on i'm not sure i like that idea is a two-way right yeah she's kind of doing that but drawing instead oh what a shot and she would have had a really nice look at the six had that yeah, dropped yeah. um yeah yeah i think that was a good a good opportunity there a good smart shot by melissa because she doesn't really sell out much if liz makes this four ball then she has to deal with the six from <laughs> a difficult place, which is wait, you know, down table. Mm -hmm. You want to address the six ball from this side of the table here so you can make something happen. Yeah, definitely. Nice shot. Yeah, good cut. Now and the she, options. Yeah, I like I like where she left this because I don't like the combo, but I think there's a safety here. Mm-hmm. Safety lay is really nice from this angle, I think. Just hit the six pretty full, roll the cue ball forward behind the eight, and just make yeah. sure the six has enough. I almost want to use a little bit of right spin to check this ball off the rail so it dies off that left rail so I can hit the six a little bit 
harder, a little bit fuller. You could just really slow roll the six down to that first diamond. Because you know... You, oh, yeah, even you know slower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. then you know you're going to end up on the eight. Oh, she hit a little too thin, I think. Yeah. Contain, though, contain. All right, let's see the same two-way again. This time you draw back more, though. Draw back under the eight. Or is, or is it cut it up table? Separate the balls. Oh, pretty close. Tough situation of being in this one. Um, you're likely to sell out most safeties, or you're moving the six ball more than a few diamonds, more than a diameter or so. So, getting the really, really thin hit on this is pretty tough. I think a snooker player would just bank this six one rail back down to the second diamond on the bottom cushion, but on a pool table, that might might leave a makeable shot still. You're flirting with that top right corner. I do like banking this to the bottom right corner. Loading up with top. Might be the shot. Let's see. Oh, oh she tries it. to cut, cut, it. cut it in. Wow. Really hit that thin. Wow, she overcut it from that distance. That's yeah. wild. And that's going to give Melissa the golden opportunity to get on the hill here. Yeah, pretty big shot. Yeah, and she just draws to that mid-table position. Any, anywhere but straight on the eight. Should be pretty good. Right, yeah. Either side of it is fine, too. You can deal with an angle either way, just not straight. Uh -huh. So is oh, she going to Probably a little bit of high right. Inside, yeah. yeah. A little inside to check it off the rail and bring it back towards the nine. Kills a little yep. bit of speed, too, which helps you. That's a good shot. Yeah. Well done. Little bit of a tester here, but not too bad. Medium. No problem. Melissa rushed in, showing us how it's done. On the Five hill. to one up. Yeah. All right, Melissa on the hill and breaking. She had a pretty decent chance at a break and run earlier, but she's got a little unfortunate with a bump. Big break. Wow. Squatted the keyboard nice. Monster Lasers. break does not get rewarded though. Yeah, this might actually be a push out. I don't think I like kicking at this. Yeah. Where it lies. It's because that side pocket is kind of big for the two rail kick up up around the left corner pocket. So uh, where where do you like to push to on this one? Knowing Liz, what we've seen of her so far, we know she's got some good skills here. Where do you leave? Uh, one idea I have is oh. maybe just rolling up and tapping the nine. So you leave a cross bank into the side, but you push the nine maybe in front of the four. So yeah. the four is harder to get on. Oh, she had an angle. To yeah, get. I was just seeing okay, that when she was lining nine. up. I thought, well, I guess she's not. She doesn't have to yeah. push. No, that's that's the right shot. If she misses that point, she, she'll push that two up to the top rail. That's the right call. If she can see uh, it. I think she was going for that pocket. That pocket oh, trying to make it. Yeah, okay. in the side all the way. Yeah, it's the awfully thin cut, but it, it goes. Yeah. It's possible. Well, you know, I mean, with a 5-1 lead, you can be a little more aggressive, too. You uh -huh. know, you can go ahead and just take some chances that you probably wouldn't take if it was, you know, 5-5. Five, five. That's, that's the advantage of, you know, having that big lead is it just kind of allows you a little more flexibility and you know, just letting that stroke out or, or just being a little bit more aggressive. Which is yeah, totally. Sometimes a, a big benefit. But now she overcut this to the right part of the pocket. It looked like 
So that meant that she got a lot closer to the three than she might have wanted to. But still there. Just going to be a little bit awkward of a shot. Probably use the bridge. Stretch out. It's going to be stretching. I like pulling out the bridge. I don't know. Yeah, I don't like stretching like that. If I can't get my chin right over the top, the cue, I'm, yeah. using, the, I'm using the bridge. But she she made it nice. She nailed it. Yeah. I, I just, I, I, I really struggle with any kind of accuracy at all when I uh -huh. can't get my head directly over the cue. I just lose that line. This eight ball is kind of in the way of the, of the natural kind of two railer around the five. I'm not sure if this is straight enough that you can miss the five on the way up. You could even run into the five actually. That might be a good idea. There's not enough table that gets in the way too much. Yeah, I think you're right. The, the line does kind of make it look like you're going to run into the five. And I think you got to be just okay with that. And you yeah. Gotta, and you, so you got to play this at a speed that assumes you're going to go into the five, right? Yeah, just hard enough to get some separation off the five when you do. But yeah, yeah, that's not like bad. That. Like, how much can go wrong unless you hit it like way too hard, you know? Yeah, no, that worked out pretty good. And I think that when the speed that which she shot that, she knew she was going to hit the five ball. Yeah, yeah. And if she didn't, she's going to miss it and go around two rails. It's going to be fine. He's going to have a shot in that other yeah. other corner pocket. But yeah, yeah that so was like one thing that, that Jeremy brought up in the stream. There was a shot just like that where it was like, I mean, how, how much can go wrong? I mean, you, there's nothing in the way. So you just you bump it. It's going to move five inches and you still have a shot somewhere. Yeah. You know, that's a good way to look at things, too. It's like, what can go wrong? You know, what are yeah, the what, what are the ways that this goes wrong? I think it's, it's important to know that. Like, it's really wrong if you're on this side, but it's not that bad if you're on that side. So just yeah, favor one side bump. versus the other. You need a bump. your perception. Oh, man, she got really close. Yeah, she didn't get the, the good bump that she wanted. So she's been running them pretty good here. She's ran four balls in a row so far since um, Melissa missed. And, uh, but I think she kind of got stuck. Looking at the bank, maybe into the top right corner. You know, a shot I like here maybe is, is banking the, the eight ball straight up to the top second diamond. Yeah. And sending your cue ball one rail to the right side rail and back down with some left spin to the bottom rail. I like that. Yeah. It might work. I don't know if she has too much angle for that though. Because, like you said, what can what goes wrong? You know, what are the ways that that goes wrong? It's it's not likely to sell out anything massive if you she's, if you execute. She's also gonna be way less stretched out like she is right now too. She's, she'll be shooting this. Yeah. Closer. I don't know. It's tough. Yeah, you're you're perfect. Eddie's coming back in. I was just. I, I was just telling him, Eddie. I was saying I need to I need to get something to eat here, so yeah, I'm gonna be taking a break here pretty soon. So precisely what I did. We're seeing uh, Liz Jensen and Melissa Rushton battle it out here. And, uh, Melissa's been pretty on point so far. She's got herself a nice five-one lead and is on the hill. Hi everybody, I'm back. We got Eddie Mattia back in the booth. How's it going? Oh, this could be over pretty soon. Uh oh. Yeah, this could be it for Liz in this round. Uh, again, this is a winner side match, round three. High right, forward two, three rails. Did Melissa just play really well here? Is that the deal? Like what she, a lopsided yeah. score? She's playing pretty pretty solid. Yeah. Yeah, she does. Mm. 
He plays well. Yeah. A lot of good yeah. safeties and uh, some good uh, good closeouts as well to right. You know, to complement that. So. Got a good all around game. Yeah. In my opinion. Right at the ball. Well, that's. Oh. Ooh, that's didn't want to hit it. Well, this is this is what we talk about in nine ball. These are the shots you got to yeah. practice. You got to practice those all the time because yep. these man, need to be in. Right? Know, yeah, these are how many these, thousands yep. of shots like this do you see when you play nine ball? Right. Pro side. Right? Yeah, she did hit Always it on the pro, pro side. Pro yeah, you don't want to miss it on the other side. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Look at that, that nice key ball. Speed. There it is. <laughs> All right, now we saw Liz Jensen shoot a shot kind of like this, and she actually overcut it, if you remember, right? Really? She, right. She shot a really long distance shot. It wasn't on the rail before, though, but I think she's got an eye for this type of cut. Yeah, I don't I don't think she's overcutting anything here. Okay, yeah, I would be surprised she's got if, a, she, if she actually makes it. Right, so you're saying she, this might be in here, right? Is that, it might be. I don't okay. know. I've seen her shoot pretty, pretty thin from distance. <laughs> from this long of a distance? Yeah. Man, right. I mean, that cue ball is on the rail, though. Yeah, that was going to make it a lot harder. Looks like you sort of got an advantage. Looks like uh, right at the nine. All you got to do is hit right where the nine ball is, right? Uh, you take a look at the nine ball, see it? The, oh, the, the, the number, number nine. nine. Ball, yeah. Like oh, the, a little. You hit it right on the nine. That's where yeah. I'm aiming anyway. Yeah, yeah. Nice to have an aiming point. Yeah. And the nine being off the rail a couple inches does make this shot much more manageable than. Sure. But the cue wall being on the rail, that's just where the, the difficulty it comes well. in. But I think this is one that you just have to go for. Absolutely. Put your best stroke on it. All it's right. A little thick. See what she ends up with here. Chance for Melissa Rushton to close this match out. Mm-hmm. I'm almost predicting the same thing, like miss it on the pro side. Yeah, this is the nine ball player's shot, though. Like, right. Has to be in. She did make. Oh, oh, a little thick. Maybe a little overcorrection from the last one. She undercut the last, or overcut the last one, right? So this one. Yeah. She hit it on the Eddie side. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is that the same as the pro side? No, it's the, the <laughs> other one. <laughs> That's the other one. <laughs> I like that. I've heard of people say pro side. I've never heard people call it the Eddie side before. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is much easier. You know, this is much easier than her last attempt at the nine ball. Right. This so, one's going to be in, right? Well, Careful the top right corner. Yeah, yeah, the scratch is more in play on this one. Not as bad as that last there it goes. one we were talking about. Yeah. There it goes. So Liz staves off a loss here and continues the match. Claws another one back. Yep. Nicely done. Nice break. It's a couple balls. You got an opportunity to send that one down the rail and kind of push forward. I think you've got an opportunity to get shape on the two. And if you do, uh, you could be rewarded with a nice opportunity for a run out here. Yeah. You think you can avoid hitting that eight coming back out between coming back out between the eight and seven? Question. I think I'm, I might try and put a little bit of inside English on this ball. Be left hand English and uh, be on the other side of the eight. About I, oh, uh, yeah, about where she's putting at. Yeah. Uh, okay. Two rails, right? Uh, back yep. and forth. Yep. And now she's looking at putting a lot more on, but I don't think that's going to work. Yeah, and inside makes that shot more difficult, doesn't it? A bit, yes. Let me help it out if it's frozen, but yeah, it doesn't help it any if it's not frozen. 
the nine ball is a big ball here. Yeah, right. That that could definitely get you in trouble. That's what you want to be avoiding. That, oh, yeah, right. That's not too bad here. Leave All right, boys, right what's the top. shot? Well, I see you thinning off this one ball, but we're, I'm not sure here. It all depends on, uh, you know, let's see if we can get a zoomed in look at that one and, and cue ball and see how close that is to uh, to each other because it could be where you really thin off it and you can hide it behind the... You're, okay, here's a... It, I think you need, oh, need to push the, push the one ball down to the bottom rail like she's doing. Yes, like that. And yeah. then, Oh, she didn't want to do this. Yeah, that was the problem. Yeah. yeah. But it's not sitting uh, really easy here. You have to overcut this more than... You care More than you really think you do. You, yeah. You carom this or do you combo yeah, this? I'm kind of comboing it. I don't think... Is the carom there? I think it is. Yeah, it looks up just a little too much to me. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. It looks like the combination has to happen. Thank you. The cue ball needs to be by the foot, the foot spot to carom. Okay. That's what she is looking at the combo. She's eyeing up exactly where she needs to hit this one ball. And that's, you know. Just overcut it slightly more than you think. That's good advice. She didn't, she didn't undercut it, right? right? That's a, yep. oh, you have to do that. But she got good on this cue ball. She did. She got the cue ball correct. Yep. <clears throat> What are we doing here? Trying to get behind the five deuce here? Or we're we gonna bank it in? Wow. Look at that. Nice shot. Oh. That's, ooh. That wasn't very nice. No. Great bank shot. Just mm -hmm. rolls about a half inch too far. One or two here, guys. Two rails, I think. I mean, I like two rails because it just helps with separation, getting that two Very ball much so. That's, a, that's the right answer. The, the two, you get better separation than one. Yeah. You have a better chance to make it. Shooting one. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyways. Using that parallel shift makes the two rail a little bit sure does. easier to figure out, right? <laughs> it makes it plausible. Yeah. So with the six sitting in the hole, position on the five isn't necessarily, uh, you're not going to need a large angle. I don't know, how, uh, how do you want to get on the, f on the five ball here to get to the six? Do you try and get straight on and draw back or do you? She's got a slight angle here, so I just use top. Uh, how do you want to get on the five? Yeah, like, though? do you come over to the side rail, or do you leave it in the middle? I mean, what? Yeah, okay, so she's leaving it in the middle, she's accepting an angle rather than getting straight in. Yeah, as a right-handed player, I think I would prefer to have that on the rail. If I was left-handed, I would not. Sure. Um, but I like what she chose here because the six is hanging. And so it's okay to just kind of roll this in and go to the other side of the table or the. Yeah. Just got to make sure you don't get behind the nine or seven. Because, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Right. Where it's at now isn't all that bad. So she's going to go back and forth yeah. to get a little closer to it. That's a great shot. Very good. Uh, yeah, I like that shape. It's 
good thing there these players go. are helping us out with how to play this this game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're playing better than we're commentating, I think. <laughs> she's actually lining this up. She's going to play the seven in the bottom right-hand corner. She, I watched her map it out, and that's the most natural path. It's going to, Kibo is going to go around three rails. You see where she's at? She's lining the, the seven up with the bottom pocket there. That's the plan anyway. Yeah. So this has to be hit really, really thin. We've drawn, what is going on? Wow. Okay. Well, this works. Gets a nice, get a nice bump off this rail. It is. Yeah. Just roll this in and you'll be straight in and in the side pocket. Not sure she's going to be rolling anything. She she seems like she wants. She, she likes, likes to, to hit it. Yeah, she likes to put a good stroke into it, and there's nothing wrong with that. You can stroke this one as long as you're avoiding that side pocket. She likes to put a good stroke into that ball. Yeah. Which certainly makes it, you know, helps with the accuracy. In a way, you know, also uh, brings the rattle. Uh, yeah. A little more than when you roll it. That's true. Are we drawn out of this? I think we are. It, it looks like it from yeah. how she's cueing on this. Well, that's a great stroke there. Yeah. Fell a little short. Yeah, just slightly on the wrong side of the mm -hmm. eight ball there. The rolls a little further and she's in golden shape uh, you can either power over or you can sweet draw this around three rails this is it's kind of sitting in the middle yeah but i like drawing this around i think that's what she's doing yep oh she just tried to go over one well it's like you were saying the you know the speed can kind of rattle it yep especially with draw Same thing with this one, right? If you roll this one, the pocket plays much bigger than if you try and stop it or uh, force it. Yeah, I think I'm rolling this one. Not so much a roll, but like a that was a great stroke there. If you can hit it like that, that's how you right. should hit it. Yeah, if, you can hit, if you can hit it like that, yeah. you're good. And we're still alive. Yeah, so Liz Jensen coming back one game at a time. We got Cindy here versus Francis. Yeah. It's gonna be a good match, I think. Uh, I wonder what the score is here. Four to five, it looks like. It must be four to five, Francis, if the if the numbers are pointing the correct direction. But Cindy's on a good run here to get on the hill. I have to watch this end of this rack just before the next one starts. Oh no. Could be, I think if, uh, I think if Francis runs this out, it's four to five, she's on the hill. Hello everyone. Oh, this is seven. How's it going? Are you situated now, Eddie? I believe so. Just checking in this other match here. I think it's four to five. 
<laughs> he is down against Francis. They're both shooting at the seven ball. Much oh, rack, I believe, for Sydney. So let's check in. I think Melissa's back and has broken the balls, so we'll look back after this. Show. All right. I really would not mind seeing what happens here. What a good shot there. Ooh-wee. How's the cue ball end up? I think we're good enough for her to cut it in, that's for sure. It's a little in between her. I don't know. There's a little more pep in my voice, right, when it's on Cindy. I got to work <laughs> on that, you know. Hey, no, no sound bias. like that all the time. <laughs> This has to go on the side, right? Just thin cut it I in. I think so. Yeah, I think thin in the side. She's good at these two. A little bit of running angles. Well, that's going to draw out of it. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, she went in the corner. Corner? Yeah. Oh, no. Well, it's a tester. It is a tester. I think this is for the match, though. Four or five. Is it really? Oh, it is, isn't it? Yeah, four to five on the big ball. If, if that's accurate, I don't know. I think it is. I'm really playing. I'm praying for the side pocket here. Good shot. <sighs> to the side, and yeah, there's a handshake. Looks like match. So Francis advances against Cindy. Tough match. Both players still in it. That was an A-side match, so if y'all are Cindy fans, she's still in it. No worries there. Good deal. Let's get to play more pool, that's all. Mm -hmm. So now Melissa, looks like Melissa broke and left an opening for Liz, but now, or not now has the opening, I guess. Two, two to three. I really like the, the shot. shot she just shot there. I don't think she had enough of it to make it. I think she just overcut it because that's all she could see of it and played a pretty good safe there. I had to remember yeah. that one. I remember for when you get it later? Yeah. <laughs> pretty good shot. Yeah. And uh, that's also a good shot. She's tight, I don't think. Can she hit the edge of this? I think the three is out of the way, yeah. The edge of the two is exposed. The three it is, is not in okay. the way. It is, okay. Almost like she could cut it in the on her pocket there. Yeah, that's precisely what she did. That was an excellent wow, shot. Wow, what a cut. Well done, excellent. Yeah, and this is sitting, this is sitting a little too steep to cut inside, I, I think. So what do you do? Yeah, it's not quite plain easy for a safety either. No, it's not. Now, if you try to bank this into the top right corner. Uh huh. Your cue ball is not going to be hiding behind anything. If you miss. Maybe yeah, the orbit exposed. It's, needs more cut than just the stop shot. It's pretty steep. I Might be able to like stun this uh, towards the six ball, maybe. Yeah. And try to go for the bank into the top right corner, and hopefully you get behind the five or the four if you if you miss the bank. She's looking for the cut, maybe in the side. It's pretty thin, but no yeah, other bank. The bank. This is the shot. shot. That's the shot. I think she was trying to hold it for the for the side, but I think you let that cue ball run and play for the middle of the table. I think that was the shot, though. Yeah. Nice, nice bank. All right, Melissa. That's the shot that I was suggesting the one before mm. this the, that uh -huh. that's what i liked she, yeah i think the side was almost in the way of that it was right? okay yeah right it was it was tight it was awkward yeah yeah it was nice though she got a nice little bump on she the did nine, so yeah she did that very well seven i'm gonna have to swerve this and she hit it one rail real first oh nice touch yeah did she get a rail with the four no, no rail. 
the ball in hand. You need to run, let the cue ball run a little bit farther and hit that rail to the six. Move the next one safety, but. Now, now the eight ball is in the pocket, if you can see. It's a little dark, but the six has to go combination of eight. Maybe even the five. Mm hmm. Ooh, yeah, okay. Sorry, I'm trying to talk to Cindy. <laughs> Telling me about her loss. <laughs> That's good, why, I'm, yeah. Okay, what is she doing here? She's just gonna roll up and play the combination. Is that the deal? Or she could she... play for the purple five in the side if she wants. That, I think that's what she tried to do. It. Yeah. She's in between now, though. Mm-hmm. I think you still got to play the the combo, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's too big of a pocket not to. All right. Got to be careful they don't both drop here. Not the worst case if they drop oh. because the six is there. But yeah, I got barely got the eight ball to drop off. Huh? Yeah, this now is perfect actually. Shot. Yeah, a little bit left. left, right? Yeah, left left spin two rails, two rails. Right, you want to really cut this thin. You do mm -hmm. not want to hit it thick. Yeah, then you risk the scratch in the side. Maybe right, some weird stuff. The, the, the cue ball's got to have the energy in it, right? Right, just demands an accurate hit. Yeah, just like this, she hit it really nice. Oh, except for she's blocking. gonna scratch. Uh -oh. Yep. Out. Speed. Sit a little bit too fast, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think you don't need that much speed if your hit is spot on accuracy, right? Exactly, when you're hitting it thin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're just taking a little angle here, right? And drawing towards the seven, right? On the line that she just put up there. Yeah, straight in on seven is ideal. Mm hmm. Even a stop shot on the six sure. is not bad. You're going away from the nine. Mm -hmm. be good. She needs to take a little more angle in this. Um, as far as awkward cueing and being on the rail, you know, she wants yeah. to take maybe uh, at least one more inch to the right. Mm -hmm. And I think as long well, she might be doing it because she doesn't want to be stretched out. Right. That's probably why. You saw where she pointed. You can't get there where she, okay, uh -huh. yeah, she's uh -huh. moving the cue ball. All right. The only way you can mess this up is if you draw way too much. Right. Even if you get to the bottom rail, you can still just kind of follow the seven up to the top corner, right? Like right. You have a lot of options. Don't draw too much and get too high on it. Sometimes I'll follow this ball two rails yeah. and how to. Yeah, That's, I like that. I'm yeah. comfortable with that, so I'm way off the rail. Mm -hmm. you, You're but, like by the spot maybe, right? Right. Or mm -hmm. you take a heavier angle and then just pop out. She's kind yeah, of yeah. putting it in a bad spot in my opinion I think, I think it's because it, this is a, a left handed player's shot if this was on the opposite side of the table she would have already shot it because it, she could sure I'm left handed table, right? but she's yeah. going to stretch out here just makes it a little dicey this ball rattles too yes it does see that's not bad want to be off the rail yeah, but it, still you'll take this shot it's relative right I mean she's got to be <laughs> relative, glad relative. to be at the table right now right with this shot yes Yep. Oh, and not that anybody needs to know this, but it's a pretty key shot. Yeah, this is to get one away from the <laughs> Right. A lot of pressure back on Melissa. Oh, no. And of course she's in the hole, right? Oh, oh she didn't up? go in. What? Oh, this Wilder. is brutal. How can you not come back to the table a little upset? And really, you need to be really excited and yeah. pumped and to to make this and execute, right? You cannot have a bad state of mind here. Yeah, this has to be like, all right, my opponent had a chance. They didn't get out. Right. Just take this rack away. It, exactly. Right. I'm ready. Yes. The, the other world is she makes that ball and she makes the nine and you don't even have a chance. Exactly. So Got come it. up here and just drill it, right? Positive vibes. Drill this in. Nail it. Yep. Oh, corner? Oh, good try. I, I like the way she approached that shot. 
Not exactly a hanger. No, it's thin. A little bit of inside to get on the nine easier. Or just follow it to take on a little bit tougher nine. It's not a problem. Yeah. For me, I might be the... going around the table without yeah. uh It's kind of sitting in the middle, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anything but center ball. <laughs> yeah, pick your side. Little yeah, see what I mean? Side. That's where center ball gets you. Yeah. It's a little awkward, but this is an inside. A little bit inside, or even even a, a good stroke with follow might get you there. Mm hmm. I think a little bit of inside you want. I think I might hit just below center and come out two rails. Two rails? Yeah. yeah there's enough angle for that. I like that shot probably most. Yeah, she's doing that. Bam. Yeah, oh, she didn't. didn't get into uh, it she sort of cinched that ball. She didn't want to miss it, putting a whole bunch of English on it. And she hit it into the thick part of the pocket, too. That's why there wasn't enough. That also, yeah. Yeah. Combination of all those things. Mm -hmm. Now, bake it to win, cut it. So, what that tells me is she aimed it up because you'd normally shoot it with English. <laughs> she aimed yeah, it up to yeah. shoot it and then kind of came back into the, the middle of the cue ball. That's why she made the ball a little funny. Yeah, makes sense. Stay down. Oh! Oh, wow. Yes. Wow. Almost drilled it. I think it went just barely long. That's wild. We well, got drama. She makes this. It's five to four, and she's, I think, breaking. <laughs> How do you like hitting this? Uh, this one, you just got to be careful with that, that right side pocket. So if you're going with a high ball, you might want to put a little bit of... Sure. A little bit of either left or right to pick which side of the side you want to go on. I'm getting in stroke drawing two low. rails here. I think that's what I'm doing. I'm drawing yeah. just below center and... and uh, I think that's the safer shot if you get enough enough low on it. Yeah. yeah. Oh no. Oh, this no. is gonna cost her, right? Yeah. That's Drama. gonna cost her the set. You could even shoot that shot without pace and just kinda of roll it in. Mm -hmm. And I don't think even think it gets to the side pocket, maybe. <laughs> right, exactly. It's yeah. touchy, but that's the match, I think. Melissa wins it. And the big hug. Great match, both so players. Liz Jensen coming back, almost making it even.